Folks, you are in for a real treat today. This is one of my favorite all-time conversations I have ever had, and I can't believe that it's about a walking, talking, cartoon preschool dog family. That's right, we're talking about Bluey and the fact that it is dominating, dominating the streaming charts. Stranger Things, Wednesday, Marvel, Star Wars, no, none of them are taking out Bluey. The whole world is in love with the little Australian dog family. At the same time that Disney has that cartoon, which they don't own, which is dominating their Disney Plus service, they also have a big decision to make when it comes to Hulu and the King of the Hill cartoon. The passing of one of the actors there, unexpectedly, means there are decisions to be made, and that one is not so fun. All right, folks, welcome back to another wonderful video of excellence here on the WDW Pro channel. What a joy it is that you have elected to join us. We are so happy to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of that culture curve. Helping me do so today is Fletcher Williams. Fletch, welcome to the channel for the very first time. Yeah, it's a awesome, it's awesome and it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you, uh, WD Pro, and uh, everybody out there listening. All right, so Fletcher, tell us real quick, though. People may not know you uh, as well as I have gotten to know you uh, and, and coming across you on various streams. Tell people where they can find you and sort of what your thing is here on the web. Ah, uh, well, uh, I have a little like gaming channel because uh, I suck at games channel, and uh, <laughs> basically I just say that I suck so bad at uh, games that it might be easier for you to get started playing games, and. Uh, you know, you could uh, use my uh, form of sucking at games as catharsis and uh, use it to it, it implore you to do better. But I also do a little bit of color commentary I produce uh, for uh, the Latinos Land, and I'm usually modding for a few other channels here on the Interflex. Well, it's a real pleasure to have you, and I, I'm so appreciative of the great work that you do over there. On the Latino Slant, you and Polly are doing just a phenomenal job, and so what a pleasure it is to have you on. Folks, if you like content like this, as we get started, click the like button, share, subscribe, and click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. All right, we are starting off with a positive note here, folks, because we believe in positivity, and the positive note that we have for all of you is that, yes, indeedy, uh, Bluey is blowing up the streaming ratings, and this is kind of, I mean, honestly, Fletch, this is funny. Um, yeah. What we're talking about here is a preschool dog family, uh, cartoon preschool dog family. Of course, of course, anthropomorphic in some ways. In some ways, they act still like dogs, so it's kind of a mix. But uh, produced out of Australia, not part of Disney Studios in any way. Disney is uh, acquiring this. They're paying to have this on their streaming service. And at times, Disney has been uh, accused of censoring too much Bluey, especially when uh, Bluey in their Australian vernacular talk about shall we say, tooting, and uh, and Disney doesn't like that. So Disney will put lots of things on Disney+, Plus. but if uh, the little dog family uses the wrong verbiage for uh, uh, breaking wind, then Disney will break their episode. Now, Fletch, here's what's so funny, and then I want your commentary on this, because this is hilarious to me. Let's take a look at these numbers. This is just nuts. On Disney+, Plus, Bluey now, <laughs> it's, it has exploded on the, you know, it was already doing fantastic. It's already right. basically the only thing Disney Plus has. But now it's sitting at over 1 billion minutes watched in this latest weekly Nielsen tracking. 1.3 billion with a B minutes watched. That's not even where it stops, folks, because guess what? If we go to original and we look and see what does Disney Plus, what else do they have? Secret Invasion in its fourth episode was down to only 347 million minutes watched. What does that mean? Well, it means that Bluey is quadrupling. Bluey is quadrupling the ratings for a major Marvel series, Secret Invasion, in its fourth episode. Yes, we can all talk about the number of episodes that Bluey has. I don't think that that's really a fair comparison because I think that preschoolers and parents are just tuning in to Bluey because it is comfort watching. So, Fletch, let me go to you now. What in the world do you make? of the idea that a little cartoon dog has suddenly not just dominated Disney plus, but other than suits, it is the top spot for all of streaming. Well, it lets you know that families are looking for good, wholesome uh, content for one second. It lets you know that Disney in a sense is creatively bankrupt 
because this was their niche. Their niche was to give wholesome content to parents, and they have failed in that. And now a small family-owned company out of Australia is blowing them out the water without letting them get rights to it. And it's amazing to see. It's, this is a truly the rise of like the small creators because they are able to pivot. They're able to move. Um, unlike, you know, Disney, who's just such a mastodon to be able to turn with every wind of the culture that's happening. And Bluey's right there. Boom. I mean, they have a complete family. They have a family with a father that's not a joke. A father who supports his kids, loves his wife, goes to work. What a great, great point you're making, Fletch. What a great point. Continue, please. I mean, you have something that people are longing for, which is a good nuclear family that's wholesome, that's not preachy, that's able to develop uh, actual um, complex uh, little storylines and also fun little ones that little ones can enjoy, but also I, I actually know a few adults who watch Bluey, you know, because it's so fun. They get sucked into it. It was like back in the days when kids used to watch uh, Animaniacs, and they will all sing the song about the states, and you could play it over and over again. And and <laughs> I remember that, yes. Yeah, and they used to be fun, right? I mean, you were like, let's let the kids check it out, but also the adults would be like, oh my gosh, this is how am I going to remember which states they are? You know, how many countries are they? You know, and I, I still uh, don't know how Rob Paulson was able to do that. You know, Rob Paulson is amazing in terms of his ability to string those states together. I've seen him actually do it live, and he, I mean, he's really doing it. So, wow. But I, I, I agree with you, Fletch. You know, when, when we're looking at Bluey, and, and, and it seems so silly that we're talking about this. You know, we're talking about a preschool show and we're trying to explain entertainment and keep people ahead of the culture curve here. But, but, but we have to talk about a preschool show because it's dominating the ratings, period. And I think you're exactly right. This comes down to the fact that audiences are starved for a positive male role, role model treating a positive female role model in the right way and she reciprocating that right back. People want to be like Bluey's parents. Right, I, I don't remember their their names. It's a uh, let's see, Bandit is the dad. Do you remember the mom? Yeah, thank you. Oh, I don't remember the name of the. It's one of those like it's on the tip of my tongue. But 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 anyway, they but people want to be Bluey's parents. Yes, you know they see this and they and the the parents are role playing out how they would most love to play with their kids because that's the idea. The idea behind Bluey is the idea of play and proper play within the family, and so parents are watching this, and then also I think young adults too are watching it, and they're sort of reminiscing about their childhood and the wholesomeness of family in its best form. And then on, on, the, on the child level, of course, the children are watching this family play out how a family should be. And, and here's the other thing about it, Fletch. I cannot imagine the goodness that is coming from this show for children in particular who are not in a positive family situation. Because Correct. at least this, even at least these little cartoon dogs are playing out an ideal that perhaps perhaps your family life as a five-year-old or a six-year-old is not what it should be. And perhaps you're very sad and perhaps uh, you know things have not gone the way they should at a young and tender age. But you can watch Bluey and see that there's, there's perchance a way to get there in the future. And I don't know that children conceptualize it that way. I don't know that they ponder it on that level. But I think, I think subconsciously, unconsciously, perhaps it's there. What do you, what do you make of just the idea of a positive good that this is putting out into the world. No, I think it's a, a thousand percent, a thousand and two thousand percent, because we are having such a fragmented uh, group of society, especially children now, that are not growing up with both parents in the house through no fault of their own, maybe through no fault of the parents. But it's a nucleus that it's it's totally needed. And back in the days, I heard that, you know, me coming from South America, we had more like a tribal thing where everybody, if, if somebody's parents were missing and stuff, uh, you know, my dad would spend a little bit more time with certain kids, um, bring them along to places just so they can have the male role model figure uh, in their life because everybody knew that that was important in the community. And now that's kind of missing. And this is showing uh, 
kids who don't have that structure, what that structure is, what boundaries they are, what um, what is able, what is is a good wholesome interchange. You know, what should I say if they say this? What should I say? Is it okay to say toot? Obviously, for Disney Plus, it's, it's, it's now or iffy. That's now right. Baymax, Baymax will go into the girls' uh, uh, you know restroom and do all sorts of things. But no, 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 you can't say toot. You can't say toot on television. It reminds me of the old Nickelodeon show. You can't say that or you can't do that. Right. Um, you know, Fletch, as you were talking, and by the way, Fletch, wh what part of South America are you originally from? Well, uh uh, my my dad is uh, from Argentina, from an, a colony there in Argentina, and my uh, mom is from Brazil. So it was funny because both countries kind of dislike each other, and uh, it, you know Argentina is a little bit iffy on the because you know my mother's like uh, black and indigenous, and so in Argentina it was like oh, so we kind of moved around in between the two countries depending on political warfare. But then we ended up here in the United States. So it's great. <laughs> well, and wound up on the channel and so happy to have you. And, uh, well, I, I just want to say this too, Fletch. You know, you were bringing up a fantastic point. And uh, I was thinking while you were talking about that, we've kind of devolved into a tribalism uh, around the world where, uh, and maybe that's the natural state of things. And we, we had a, this brief, uh, you know, respite from it during the 80s and 90s where people started to realize from the horrors of World War II that, you know, the, the idea of, of dividing them along racial lines and, and putting a, a hierarchy of, of racial value is a terrible, terrible idea that will lead to, to catastrophe. And perhaps that gave us a momentary breath where we, we all uh, agreed, hey, let's treat each other as, as brothers and sisters. You know, as a whole, I know that, that there's still been issues for the last decades. But as you were talking, I was thinking about this, this bluey phenomenon, and I was reminded that perhaps this is reaching back into the past because, you know... I remember from the the eighties and the nineties, there was there were sitcoms, for example, that that perhaps were not aimed directly at children, but at least were aimed at uh, teenagers and young adults, and perhaps children as well. And I'll give you this example. I've said this before, but there's so many new viewers on the channel every day, and, and I want to say it again. You know, I have a friend who he did not have a father in the household, and this this friend of mine he learned how to shave by watching Reginald Vell Johnson playing Carl Winslow on Family Matters, teaching his son, his TV son, Eddie, how to shave. Yeah. And I'm, I'm reminded of the fact that there were so many children all over the world, uh, you know, black, white, uh, Hispanic, Latino, uh, Asian, it doesn't matter, like everybody. You know, and we've, we've categorized ourselves in these ways, but children all over the world were watching Family Matters. They were watching... Carl Winslow be a dad. And it didn't matter necessarily that he was black, although it was good to have uh, the representation of a man such as he on TV. But all of these kids saw him as a father figure, no matter what the color of their skin was. And I'm kind of thinking that Bluey is doing the same thing in that, yes, they're Australian. They've got the Australian voice. And, and of course, the, the, the setting, you know, in this cartoon style is, is Australian. But Bluey is a family for all. And that, I think, too, is reaching out and that's what we need more of. We need to get rid of this tribalism to some degree so that we can find the empathy that resides in us and find the uh, the family that we should all be. For example, Fletch, your family is from South America. My family is not, right? So my, my ancestors go back to Scotland. That doesn't matter in terms of being a friend to you. I mean, uh, we're still, you know, we're still right here together having this deep conversation. And perhaps that matters uh, just as much as that we're, we're sharing in humanity, and I think that's what Bluey is up to, which, amazingly, it's a preschool dog cartoon that's managing it. So, your thoughts no, on that? No, I think it's amazing. I guess I'll, I'll push back a little bit on the tribalism part, because I hear it all the time now. Everybody's like, oh, we got to be against tribalism, because they think this tribalism is some kind of uh, thing that takes over everything, and everybody has this hive mind that's, that's just uh, intolerant. Uh, I guess coming from, you know, part of my family comes from a tribe. So it feels like a, a tight slit, like a, a, you know, like a slide. So, so walk so, me through that, Fletch. Is it because of the word tribal or is yes. it because of the idea that's behind it? I think both because I think they're trying to muddy up the whole tribalism part. Being part of a tribe is an awesome thing. Uh, you know, I can go to powwows here in the United States and you're upset that even though you're not part of their tribe, 
you're accepted because of the whole, you know, we're all part of Native Americans. Um, when you go to a, <clears throat> a black, uh, you know, event, you're like, okay, you're part of the event. I guess my thing is because back in the days, we didn't have the whole, I think the separation between tribal, uh, tribalism and race, because um, back in the day, like you're Scottish, you would hang out with a lot of Scots. Um, they would be like Scots pubs and stuff like that. And everybody would kind of uh, join around. I think Blue is doing something similar. It's like, this is the Bluey tribe in a sense. And everybody's joining the Bluey tribe and it's accepted into the Bluey tribe in a way so that me, people that are open-minded are accepted into the Bluey tribe, you know? So let me, let me toss an idea at you, Fletch, and let's, let's explore this because I think this is fascinating. If, if we were to switch to the, to the terminology of perhaps like uh, identitarianism or identity politics over uh, the idea of, of tribalism. So let's substitute that word out if it has a negative connotation. And let's say that if, if people are switching now to a hard identitarianism where they solely want to identify and communicate with those who are in their approved, uh, approved see, I almost slipped up, their approved identity group. And therefore, uh, they don't want to share empathy or uh, be in strong relationships with people outside of their identity groups. That's, I think that is the fear that I have, uh, that that is growing. Do you share in that fear if, if I phrase it that way, or do you feel uh, that perhaps that's misguided? No, no, I totally agree. I think that that is what's happening. You have this a whole, I belong to this identitary uh, idea where everybody who doesn't think in one step with me, they can think in 50 other ways equal to me, but they, if you think this one part, now we're no longer part of the tribe. Yeah, that one is a little bit dangerous. Um, but being, the, I, I guess, for my family, I could just uh, turn to that. We're Catholic, um, so there's no racial lines in my family. For one, it's obvious because we're too many different races, uh, if they consider that. But also, from the Catholic standpoint, you know, we're brothers and sisters with everybody around the world in the Catholic Church. So we're like, hey, we're all we're all in this one huge tribe in a sense, but we don't exclude because part of, uh, part of the tenants is hospitality. You know, everybody is welcome. I think this is what this show is talking about. You're, you're talking about a whole, because anytime that you have something that is true to the way nature and the, 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 uh, it's set up, um, when you have like a universal truth that uh, a husband should love a wife, that children should venerate the parents uh, and listen, you have those those universal themes. Uh, it rings true to no matter what. It's, it's kind of like how everybody now wants to think that truth is like, oh, you have your truth and I have my truth. And it's like, yeah. But is it really? Because it's if 110 degrees, you can you can go with the Celsius or Fahrenheit, but you know the degrees are there. So there are some universal truths. I think that's what Blue is hitting on. It's hitting on those universal truths that this is what this looks like. This is a good family. Let me emulate that family, and that's why it's resonating because nothing else on Disney Plus has that uh, has that um, structure. So let me bounce something off of you then, and this I, I hope the audience is enjoying this conversation as much as I am. But Fletch, uh, you were just talking about your your Catholic faith. And I was thinking about the, the, the tenets of Christianity and, and perhaps of Judeo-Christian values in that there is this sort of axiomatic belief that within each person lies divine value, right? So people have infinite value. Correct. And one of the things that that does, of course, is, you know, when you're watching Bluey, and I'm not here to suggest that Bluey is a Christian show or that Bluey is a Catholic show. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. Right. But what I'm trying to say is perhaps there's a Perhaps there's a shared, uh, uh, you know, nucleus here where what Bluey is, is playing out is when you're watching these parents spend this level of time and interest and, and play, by the way, and play, I think, is one of those high level things that we do as humans. But when they, when they invest in their children the way that they're doing so, and when they invest in the people around them, their neighbors, their community, their family around them, what that is representing out to children and to parents as they watch this is that Bluey's parents are, they are making the, 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 they're playing out their strong belief that each person they encounter has immense value. Otherwise, why would you be a part of your child's life like this? 
And you might say, you might say, Fletch, well, of course, everybody knows that. Well, no, that's not true. (laughs) If everybody knows that, then why do we have children who are abandoned by parents? Right. And why do we have people who treat other people poorly? Right. Correct. Because once you once you come to that conclusion that each person has infinite uh, value, at least as much value as you and you have a lot of value, too. Once you come to that conclusion, then you treat people differently. And you might say, well, in a materialistic kind of world, that's all fine and dandy, but you know everything's relative and I can treat people however I wish. But no, because this is the, this is the crazy thing in, in our world, is that the more you treat someone as if they truly, truly matter at that level, the more that person will like you. And it doesn't matter what their beliefs are. And the more you treat somebody as if they are just uh, a physical form, a physical manifestation of, of chemical reactions, that person will hate your guts and it doesn't matter what they believe about it. <laughs> you know, right. like the more respect, the more dignity you give to a person, the better your life will be as a result of giving people that kind of value. And I think that's what Bluey is doing. And yes, again, it's not Christian, it's, uh, you know, per se, right. but I think they're, they're sharing in this, this kind of axiomatic belief about the value of, of humanity or in the case of Bluey, what dogdom? I don't know. But Fletch, <laughs> what do you make of that? I mean, uh, am I off base? Is it way no. too far? No, no, you're completely right. I guess we're going back to the tribalism and identity politics debate, and you just nailed it on the head. Because basically, what are the two things? Like I said, on on the tribe part, I don't think tribalism is bad. As long as there's that belief that every human is born of God or born of the entity that's do that's deserving of respect. Once you have the the common divine curve, value, is that is that a, a fair enough way to put it? That's an awesome way to put it. That's I'm trying to think of a way so that if somebody's listening to this video and they they don't believe in God, they're not a theist, they're not Christian, they're not Catholic, perhaps they're not a believer of Islam, whatever you know, whatever the case might be. I'm trying to think of if the if the staunch atheist is listening to this video, what could they agree with us? And right. let's say that divine is whatever is the most highly valued thing in the world. There, let's try that. Right. It's it's basically you believe <clears throat> you believe that a human has a a, a right. You believe that you yourself as a human is valued and and you're not just on this earth to be wasted away, but you deserve awesomeness in your life. Uh, And you you believe that that your neighbor does as well. The whole part of the identity part of the politics is that they devoid the humanity in each other. You know, if you believe in that, then you're, you're subhuman. And if you believe in that, you know, it's the culture of death that is it's kind of spring forth from this. Um, that's driving, I think, that separation. Because back, like I said, back in the days, uh, you know, we watch football, and and you you could be from Brazil, and when the national team is playing, everybody everybody is cheering. In Argentina, oh my gosh, everybody's nuts. But when each team, like let's say Palmeiras in or or uh, uh, Juventus is playing, and you're like they're at each other. Because that's kind of like the way it is. That's, you know, the, the the teams are separated. And this is the microcosms that happen. But when everything, and everything is united, you're like, you know, oh, my gosh, we're playing Mexico. And it's like, hey, respect for Mexico. We'll hate each other on the pitch. But afterwards, everybody's happy and, and, and they enjoy their barbecue together because they respect the humanity in each other. I think that's what the show is saying. Even once you get once is the primal truth comes out in something it's amazing because i i gotta say blue is really like art i mean it's funny because it is a cartoons and people i think are missing out on art i think the whole uh the the art part is been taken away by corporate checklist at disney which is sad because we're talking about disney and disney's the one that's been doing that they've been doing checklists for art and you can't do that and it's actually suppressing the message i I would have a message for the people that are creating uh these uh cartoons that are at disney and shows at disney that want to attract more of the you know uh to change the conservative minds or change the 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 people that they see i would say start with good art because good art actually imitates life and shows something that's intrinsically uh, valuable to humanity and And, it's and and fletcher the other thing about this too i think is that you know bluey is being produced by a small team it's authentically australian and i hear what you're talking about when you're when you're discussing sort of this you know there's like a, a struggle there's a there's a a tug of war right where 
on the one hand, you want to be fully united with all of your brothers and sisters around the globe, right? And and you want to be able to put away differences and be in, in utter harmony with, with people. And on the other hand, you don't want to give up that which makes your group, your your I your what those who you identify with, right? Whether that's your family or whether that's your community or whether that's your city or your country, whatever the however you want to scale that up, you don't want to give up that which makes it unique. And I think sure. that Bluey is playing all along those lines perfectly. Because what Bluey is doing is it's authentically Australian. It doesn't it doesn't ask for forgiveness for being Australian. It's using words that are specifically Australian and that your kids, you know, if they if they grew up in, in Western Europe or the United States or Canada or what have you, they may not understand what some of these words mean. And they may actually start using Australian terminology. And frankly, I think that's flashing. Folks look that up and see what that means in Australia. Crikey. Um, <laughs> that's right. But uh, but I, I don't think it's making any uh, bones about the fact that it is distinctly Australian, and yet it resonates with everyone because despite being specific to a, a, a geographical location, it is speaking out universal truths through the flavor of Australian culture. Is that is that fair, Fletch? It's totally fair, and that's what gives it its flavor. I mean... I mean, when I came to the United States and we had everything was American football, and I remember there's people that are, you know, that we were we landed in Texas for some reason. So well, you had the people that are Dallas Cowboys fans, and then you had the people who were like uh, uh, Oilers, I guess, when they were the Oilers, now the Texans, or people who were like uh, 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 fans of New England or, or any of the teams. There could be best friends in the family, or even in the family, it's like, oh, well, my son likes the Patriots, my daughter likes the... You who love that camaraderie, it's like somebody, you're watching together, and, you're, and you have that tug of war. It's like, you, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, but at the end, you know, we're both teammates because it used to be a sports, and sports has something called sportsmanship. You know, it's like everything that's devolved out of this whole, like... Uh, separation uh between uh common common decency and and empathy all the all these things that separate like culture from that are the things that are bad because once you know sportsmanship used to be like we both shook hands before we shook hands after and i think this is what blue is getting into because you're showing that uh Cordial, cordial civility, I guess. It's something that should be emulated. It should be something that's uh, that should be practiced. And the authenticity, I think, helps with Bluey because we, when we go to an Australian restaurant, we want to be treated like we're going to Australia. When you go to a Brazilian restaurant, you want, you know, you want your uh, farinha and you want your little, you know, uh, churrasco. So, but when you go to a Mexican restaurant, you want your tacos. So this is what you're giving. You're getting the local flavor, but with art. And exactly. how fun is that, man? That's great. I, I love it. And you brought up uh, something that I think segues well into our uh, final point of discussion here. You brought up American football. You brought up uh, the fact that your first uh, uh, experiences in the United States happened in Texas. There's a cartoon out there that deals with Texas. Uh, it's King of the Hill. It's been around for a while now. Of course, Mike Judd, the uh, the uh, creator of the show and the voice of Hank Hill, the voice of uh, Boomhauer and others. But uh, a major a major actor who's a part of that show has passed away unexpectedly. Johnny Hardwick has died. He's the uh, voice behind Dale Gribble. And, uh, you know, I will always be thankful uh, to Johnny Hardwick because uh, I can't tell you the amount of laughter that my uncle in particular has had. Uh, <laughs> th the episode where Dale thinks that he has rabies and goes out in the, into the woods in his underwear. Uh, and, and for me, the episode where Dale, uh, Dale is going to donate his, kid his kidney to a NASCAR driver, but in order for the NASCAR driver to receive his kidney, which is a rare match, he has to agree to put a giant plastic dead bug to advertise Dale's uh, uh, termination services, Termin yeah. uh, extermination services right. on top of the NASCAR vehicle. Those are some of the funniest things uh, on television. I think that King of the Hill uh, is similar to Bluey. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to make a direct comparison here, but I think that Hank Hill uh, is a character that that gives off those same strong paternal 
values that are universal. It doesn't matter that Hank is a uh, proud Texan man. You know, his neighbor calls him a redneck. You know, the, the, the group that's in Arlen, Texas and King of the Hill, uh, I think they speak universally out to people. And, you know, this what, what a sad thing that this uh, gentleman has passed away at such a young age, 64, far too young. Of course, folks, you can see the article here on Deadline. It's linked in the video description. Make sure you go click on it. Um, but Fletch, I want to get your take because this is another uh, big show for Disney. This one on Hulu. They've had the same gentleman playing Dale. And I assume that he's already re recorded, you know, this first rebooted season coming back. Um, but should they recast or what should happen with this character of Dale Gribble going forward, do you think? Well, this, this is, you know, this is a hard one and eternal rest be granted onto him. And and hopefully, you know, um, Mike Judge, he is a very artistic fella. So I do think that he's able to you know, maneuver this in a great way. I mean, he brought us things like Idiocracy and, you know, uh, Beavis and Butthead, you know, very zeitgeist type shows that people still talk about. And uh, he's, I think he was born in Ecuador, I believe. Um, but I think he's able, he's going to be able to do some, whether Dale has laryngitis, whether he, uh, you know, <laughs> through some kind of, uh, mechanical playing with the lawnmower thing. Something happened to his vocal cords. It will happen. I think that he understands that this is a character that resonates with a lot of that Americana, especially Texas kind of Southern um, uncle that we all have. That's a little crazy. It's funny because right. <laughs> the guy who always has those things that he says around the table, you know, when you gather together and you, everybody in the family just kind of looks sideways and goes, Let's not touch that. Let's just let Crazy Uncle be the way he is. <laughs> but that Crazy Uncle brings the levity to the table. That's you right. Know? Yes. Yeah. We, that's need, we need Dales. Dales we are important Dales. in the world. Yeah. So I think <laughs> this is part of the thing that we're like missing out because you know it's not it's not it's not lost on me that the conspiracy theorist uncle passes away. You know. So it's like. You even have that conspiracy thing, like, was it, is he gone? Is he not? I guess, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, the man and it's Right, you're talking about the cartoon character. I'm yeah. still about the character. So it, it gives light to, like, man, I could write material now about it, you know? You could just see the idea. It just writes itself because the character is so well drawn. And my judge is one of those persons who, who knows who the character is and lets the character be. Um, much like the people in Bluey and not the ones in other like Disney shows where the character seems to do one thing and then all of a sudden now he's a completely different character. Um, and this this gentleman not only embodied that, uh, that, that kind of freshness of I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm a good person. Right. The conspiracy theorist who can't see the truth under his nose, of course. His yeah. wife, Nancy, is having an affair for years. His his child is clearly not his own, but, but he is uh, he's convinced he's caught on to exactly what's going on with uh, extraterrestrials and all of that. He's got, he's got it all figured out, you know? Yes, absolutely. Disney, uh, Disney has some things they need to figure out. They've got two cartoons here that have to have big decisions made. Of course, King of the Hill, what to do uh, when such a huge player in the, uh, the role has passed away. Do you recast? Do you not? And then with Bluey, how in the world does Disney get their hands on this beyond what they have? This is lightning in a bottle. And then, of course, all the rest of us are hoping if Disney does manage to acquire Bluey fully, please don't ruin it. And we know that you want to. Maybe you don't even <laughs> know that you want to, but you will. So please, for the love of all things good, don't mess with Bluey. I'll Leave Bluey alone. alone. <laughs> That's right. Well, Fletch, tell people where they can find you on this great, big, beautiful web one more time. Oh, you can find me at uh, uh, Fletcher Williams' uh, Suck at Games channel, uh, but also at uh, Latino Slant, uh, we do every Monday at uh, 1230, and um, we cover all the Latino uh, news that is happening around the entertainment world. Well, folks, we uh, started this thing off going to talk about cartoon dogs and the passing of someone uh, dear to a, a TV series. This went places I was not expecting, and it has become one of my very favorite conversations we've ever had on the channel. 
I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I think we both did here. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you do stick it to the algorithms. It is that cute little notification bell. Look at it. You want to click it. Folks, do if you'd it. like to become a member of the channel, it's the price of a soda per month. You get all kinds of exclusive content. And don't forget, folks, that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun, and keep being kind. Oh. What are you doing? Well, you see, I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their, uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. So I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, uh, you pay for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney, or even other media organizations, you should check out ThatParkPlace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate, and, uh, less dumb. Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? <sighs>